once you wet your paper, you can then begin to pour your pigment. I like to use plastic pipettes, and I'll be pouring quinacridone sienna, phthalo blue red shade, and phthalo turquoise today. Once I have poured, I'll rock the paper to and fro until the colors have a nice blend, and I'll often splatter some additional color in just to make more variety in the background. And also, since this is going to be the color of the rocks, having these little speckles and splotches will add interest and texture to the rocks when the painting is done. I will now do a contour drawing, meaning that I'm drawing only the outline of each rock. I'm gonna swatch my colors on a little color trail at the bottom of the painting just to make sure I'm gonna have my values dark enough for this next layer of painting, which will be to lay in the shadows of the rocks. As I start to paint the crevices and background of the stones, you'll notice that I switch between round brush and angle brush often, usually laying the color in and then using a clean, damp angle brush to sweep the color out and over other rocks, creating the illusion of shadows on the rocks and giving a layering effect where one rock is in front of the other. And also um, just tying things in and creating smooth transitions from rock to rock. So some will be clearly defined and others will kind of blend together. Uh, once again, um, the only colors used on this painting are quinacridone sienna, Thalo Blue Red Shade and Thalo Turquoise. I hope you enjoy seeing all the different blends that these colors produce and also the exciting value change. So I'm able to get the most um, light muted pastels out of these colors all the way to nearly, nearly, uh, nearly black with them. So um, great color palette by Daniel Smith. And I'm also painting on Windsor Newton paper. I really love this cotton is 100% cotton paper and the way that the fibers open up and accept paint and the way that they blend is, is just beautiful. I also love this paper because it takes a lot of abuse. So I'm heavy handed and I use a lot of water in my paintings. And I also do stencil lifting, which you'll see at the end of the painting. As I continue with the shadows and background, I'm alternating my colors. So some I'm going more to the grays, um, others brown, and I'm also dropping in um, with the tip of my round brush, little drops of the quinacridone sienna, thalo blue, and turquoise in a real concentrated form. So if you see any areas where there's a very bright um, color in the shadow, that's how I achieve that look is by just, you know, tapping the tip of my brush onto the wet area with a heavy pigment load.
I will now lay in my darkest value. So I, my first layer, which was the pore, is my lightest value. My mid value were um, all the shading that I've done up till now. And now my final darkest value will be the same three colors alternated um, and uh, use sparingly. So I wanna add shadows, but I wanna think of design. The area of highest contrast is usually where the focal point will be. So I want to, um, add this darkest value, but be sensitive to where I'm putting it. See right there, your eye immediately went to where the dark was. So if I use this sparingly, I can actually create a pathway through the painting to where your eye, um, the dark will pull your eye to it and allow your eye to travel around the painting. You can also carry the darkest value around the painting by just adding little nooks and crannies. Why do I hold so many brushes in my hand? Well, oftentimes the round brushes have pure pigment, like pure quinacridone sienna, for instance. That way I can just dab it into the wet areas as I paint. And I'll often have clean, damp angle brushes also in my hand. It's not really something that I do consciously anymore. Uh, people will mention it and I'll look down and I might have, you know, five or six brushes at a time. Of course, I had to do stencil lifting because it's addicting and fun and I just can't get enough of it. When you're doing a special technique or special effect on watercolor, less is more. But if you're like me and you start using stencils, you want to use them on everything. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Should I have left my stones without the stencil lifting? Or do you like the texture and um, interest that it brings? Thanks for watching.